Hi there, it's Ian here, and you're watching Grumpy Opinions, the show where I'm going to tell you all about what I think of films, TV shows, games, and life in general. The Handmaid's Tale follows the story of Ofrid, formerly June, a handmaid in the post-revolution world of Gilead, formerly America, trying to live her life as a handmaid. Episode 10, Night, the season finale, follows up where last week left off, with Moira out in the middle of Nowhereville, where she finds a farm and she checks out the number plate on the car, and it turns out that she's actually managed to make it to the fabled land of the Canadas in the north, and she's totally over the moon, understandably, because she's free of Gilead. And she's a little bit confused when she meets her caseworker and he's just nice to her and gives her money and a phone and like lots of forms and keeps trying to offer her lots of food and extra clothes and things. And eventually Luke comes to find her because it turns out that he put her on his list of family and they have a big hug. But meanwhile, back in Gilead, June's having kind of a bad day after remembering back when she first became a handmaid and she got tagged on the ear which I'm pretty sure will be important next season, because they don't do anything with it this week. And Mrs Commander just about concusses her straight off the bat and drags her into the bathroom to make her take a pregnancy test. And wouldn't you know, it turns out positive. And then suddenly she's all kind of nice and vaguely pious, crazy woman. And then when the Commander gets home, Serena lays it on the line that she knows all about his extramarital activities and taking Offred away to like, the club. And he's like, go to your room. But then she tells him that June's pregnant and that the baby isn't his, and he's left a wee bit stunned. And the next morning, June's being treated nice by everyone, even Nick, who's all like, hey, I'm a dad now, this is great, until Lady Macbeth comes in and her and Offred go off for a drive with a different driver. And when they finally get to the place they're going, Serena goes out and sits and talks with a wee kid, and Offred suddenly realises it's her daughter Hannah, but she's locked in the car and can't get out and can't make a noise. And Serena tells her that Hannah's fine, but she'll only stay that way as long as June keeps her baby safe. And when they get home, June tries to find Nick, but he's not about, so she goes and speaks to Commander Shakespeare, and he's a bit out of shape but because they had to punish Commander Watford after last week's revelations, and he ended up having his arm cut right off, mostly because his wife stirred up a fuss. So Shaky's a bit shaken by it after all. Which is probably why at first light he goes to the baby room to try and make things up to his missus, promising that once the baby is there then June's going to go bye bye and they will actually be a proper family together and everything will be back to it was before. And then June gets summoned off to like one of these meetings in the park, like back at the start of the season. But this time it's a stoning. And they all think that something's not quite right, because even Aunt Lydia's a wee bit overwrought. So when they all get into a circle, and they bring out the prisoner, it's Janine. And it seems that she's going to get dead for nearly killing her baby. But Offglen, yeah that one, the really officious one, she's not having it and gets rudely blatted in the face by a guard and then dragged away. But nobody wants to get with the rock tossing. And then June steps up and does a big mic drop with the rock. And then so do lots of the other ones, and Aunt Lydia sends them all home, promising though that there will be consequences. But they all march home with their heads held high. And it's not very long before a meat wagon suddenly comes screaming up to the house, and after a quick whispered word of it'll be fine from Nick, June gets bundled off, much to the consternation and confusion of the Shakespeare's. And then, the doors slam closed. End of season. So what did I think? Well, I've kind of avoided talking too much about spoilers for the book so far because I don't know who's actually read the book and who's not, and I didn't really want to spoil anything for people. But now that we're at the end of the season, I can kind of say that, yeah, this plays out almost exactly the same as the way the book did. In fact, I think Serena's dialogue is straight out of the book as well, like what she ends up saying as they're dragging June off. After everything we've done for you. And I kind of appreciate them leaving it on that note, because if they'd never ever made a second season of the show, then that would have basically just been a clever nowadays adaptation of the story and ended pretty much on exactly the same note of does she get away? You know, is this some kind of resistance van? Is it a trick? Or is she off to prison or death or some horrible fate? Although, I mean, to be fair, the book does have one little thing, which is kind of weird epilogue set 200 years in the future, where some kind of history class is discussing the events of the story as some kind of history lesson, commenting on how things were different in those days. So, I mean, maybe they actually will have that at some point later on in the show. Like, who knows? That might be the very end of the very last episode of the last season of this. It's hard to say. But ultimately... I really liked this and thought this was a fantastic culmination of a load of things. There were so many secrets and lies coming to the fore and there were so many fantastic moments in this episode. And first up, I've just got to say, the arm amputation scene, and no, I'm, I'm not even going to show the footage because it was just so downright horrible. Particularly because it was so clinically and methodically done, showing you the whole operation in such a matter-of-fact way. And then the big clunk at the end when presumably the guy's like arm gets just tossed in a bin or something. 
I mean, that totally gave me the shivers. And not a lot of things do that. But anyway, great job. And it was really wise saving that till the end of the season. Because we've seen things like, you know, eyes missing and hands missing before. But it really shows us not only how these things happen, but that they don't also just happen to the handsmaids. That everyone's kind of tied into this. You know, nobody can really get away from the, the horror of Gilead. They're all locked into it for better or worse. And yeah, you know, you don't really care that it happened to like one of the commanders, but actually seeing it happen was just so icky. And I love the work that Joseph Fiennes did to kind of show that his burgeoning connection as he sort of joins the dots and realises that his mate is going to go down for this in a bad way. And that, you know, it was actually the guy's wife who basically ends up getting his arm cut off and that his own wife really could do the same thing to him if he's not careful. And I also like that we got the scene of June reading all those letters in the bathroom. Which I don't think I mentioned in the recap, but yeah, she opened the package and it was full of letters. And I've always said, if you're going to steal something, steal from the best. And they totally did that here, because this was very reminiscent of that bit in View for Vendetta, where Evie finds a letter from Valerie. And after reading it, she, you know, she doesn't care anymore and she's willing to die rather than give in to the bad guys. And I also really like the scene when June just starts railing on Serena about how she's going to go to hell after they drive away from Hannah. And how that's the one thing that actually seems to get through to her, since since none of them are living without sin and they've all got their problems and their bad things are doing. And showing that despite what we've seen in like humanizing Serena, she's still neck deep involved in like the creation of Gilead and with the slightly religious mania of it all. And she's willing to do nasty stuff, just like threatening June's daughter and also her own husband. And I think it's a season that's been really well put together. I mean, it's told a fairly Spartan story, much like the book itself. The book was more florid and more than it was detailed and specific, so I think the fact that expanding on a lot of the stuff was really good. And I think this is the best it probably could have been. I mean, I don't know how you could do much better in adapting the story without making it kind of flabby and a bit meandering. I mean, granted, there was an awful lot of, like, slow-mo and stuff in this, but it doesn't really bother me much. Because, I mean, you only have to look at the 1990 movie to see that you could make this a kind of a lacklustre experience with some dodgy moments. But it's not like it's completely perfect. I mean, there are a few things they could improve. And I just hope that season two, they actually invest in some light bulbs because this season has just been too dark. And I know that's stylistically what they're trying to do. And it does give you some fantastic shots and great moments. But it also feels a bit weird and nuts that everybody lives in this perpetual semi-darkness. Also some weird choices, like when they went into super slow motion just for the shot of them taking their hoods off. I mean, what? why? I don't, I don't know what they were trying to do there, but it didn't really work. And even though I totally got what it meant, the bit of her getting her ear clipped with like a tag, like, you know, like cows get. I mean, I knew it was evocative and it made sense, but it was so on the nose that I nearly laughed. And I do appreciate a good lift now and again, but the, the whole mic drop, rock drop, you know, thank you thing kind of felt a little bit, I am Spartacus. I mean, I couldn't stop going through my head this I am Spartacus, I am Spartacus thing. And I don't mind that it happened, but I couldn't stop thinking of that during it. And I appreciate it's kind of echoing the opening scene of June saying sorry to Aunt Lydia and then her kind of using that against her at the end. But yeah. And I do wonder, should I continue with the series? I mean, I'm definitely going to watch it, but I'm just not sure if I actually want to review it. But we'll see. And if I do, you know, I might actually try and find it its own theme tune because I've been using the same one I used for my Outlander videos back when I first started reviewing this show. And I think it's time it had something of its own. But that's if I continue it. So I'll probably have a week or two off from this and concentrate on other shows and maybe my movie roundups. But why not let me know what you think in the comments. And until next time, I've been Ian. And these have been my grumpy opinions. And a special shout out to my top tier patrons Judith Coloma and Michelle Forbes and to everybody else who's a patron and everyone else who's watching the show and subscribes and does all that good stuff. And if you haven't, you can find me on all the regular places here on Twitter and we even have a Facebook group. But yep, thanks everybody, stay well and everyone have a fantastic week. Cheerio!